for that. Um, I, uh, the problem with this silly new thing on Zoom on your phone is that I don't get to see the comments unless I get all the way back out and I don't see the screen very big, but we're here. As long as you can see me, that's all that matters. So if there is any sort of a breaking <laughs> chat that comes in, somebody let me know. But I'll just, I will wait every a few minutes before I get everybody here. Mm -hmm. well, and then just make sure you're muted. If you could just please make sure you're muted so that everybody could hear everything. Are you live? Yeah, no, she's live. How do I unmute? Claudine. I think I got you there, Helen. Good to see you. <laughs> I think I got you muted there. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. I'm so glad you, you made it. You're here live. So I just want to give everybody a minute or two. I'm out here outside of the conciergerie. And I am glad you guys are all could be here today because it just happened to be the 229th anniversary about six hours ago that Marie Antoinette left this very spot where we are standing. So I figured today would be the perfect day since it is a Sunday and it's time for a live walk. And it is a lovely day in Paris. It is warm. I have my uh, scarf on. Say hi, everybody. I have this scarf on this wool. And I had my leather jacket on because earlier it was a little chilly and I left my apartment and I was like walking here and I was like, oh, whew, too warm. <laughs> so I uh, thankfully have my bag with me. So I crumpled up my leather coat into there. So I think we'll see if there's anybody else waiting to get in here. Oh, yeah. See, this thing is just a stinker because it doesn't tell me when people are wanting in. Hang on here one second. Bunch more waiting. Hi, Chrissy and Angela. Some few names that I see there. So I'll keep checking on that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully if any joins us, I'll just check every uh, couple minutes here at the start. So today is, as I said, if you just got in here, today is the 229th anniversary of the day that Marie Antoinette was beheaded she was killed she was brought here where this is the uh, courthouse this is the conciergerie this was when paris just was on this little tiny island of ile de la cite this is was where the palace was and only parts of what we see as a conciergerie remain um today of that but everything else here is uh newer in the scheme of paris when you say newer you know when you say newer and um the U.S. It's you know 20th century here. I think of newer as anything past the 19th century. <laughs> but of course, here you have the beautiful Saint Chapelle in there. Um, they have this wire around here. Maybe I could stand back a little. I'll show you. They have a uh, the Saint Chapelle, which was of course built by Saint Louis to house the crown of thorns and the other rel other relics of Christ that he purchased. It was cheaper to build that entire beautiful building that is a uh, called the jewel box by many of us because inside of it it is all stained glass when you walk in especially on a lovely sunny morning the stained glass gets hit by the sun and it's just the most beautiful sight you've seen they also do concerts in there but that is in here i was hoping maybe i could go in there but it closed the doors earlier um so i could not get in there but you have the courthouse here too so the conciergerie was is here you could also visit that it's a really interesting to go visit and they have her former cell um, that they turned into a little chapel. And the first time I saw it, I, I, I weeped a little. It was very sad. Um, but here it was called the anti-chamber of death because this is where they went basically before they went to the guillotine. And I'll try to go in here without upsetting these handsome gendarmes that are here that I talked to earlier. But if you look straight down there, that little entryway right there is where she came up. So she came up, walked up, they brought her up those steps. Right before that, that day they had uh, cut her hair. She was wearing a very plain dress that Rose Bertin, who was her 
uh, designer made for her. She walked up that uh, steps. They put her on the back of basically like a flat bed carriage and they took her down the street to a route that should have taken less than an hour, but it actually took almost two hours, that hour and 45 minutes, because there was thousands and thousands of people lying in the streets to see her taken off to her death. Um, they had a uh, kind of a sham trial here the day before. Um, it started on the 14th of October. Um, she was basically, we, they all knew she was going to be condemned to death. It was just kind of formality um and that she was she was sentenced to death at about 2 30 in the morning on the 16th of october and by 11 a.m she was on her way to her death so here's a conciergerie you go in here it's not a it's not a uh, huge thing it's not a big huge visit it is really interesting when you walk in let's see if i can show you through the windows which is what everybody else just tried to do um, <laughs> You can go downstairs. It's really, there's a um, special contemporary art exhibit in there right now. Um, but it is where you walk through and see where she was um, there at the end. You could also go into like the little women's courtyard of the prison, which is kind of sad just to go in there and think of her at those last days. Of course, back then, and as soon as she was brought into the royal family, she because she was from Austria, and Austria and France were not in a good position. Her mother married her off because her Marie Antoinette's father had died, and he did not like the French. So when he died, her mother was like, "Great, now I could get something I want. I get this alliance with France, and they'll give me money and take care of us, and so you could have our daughter." So she was always kind of known as a foreigner, is what they called her. So this she kind of had a mark on her back from the very beginning this of course is the oldest clock in paris going back to the mid 16th century here on the corner so this side of the conciergerie is, is the oldest part of it down here and we're going to actually go the same exact way that she did So going over the Champs, which gets that name because this is where the goldsmiths and money brokers, everybody were here. So you can come here and sell your things um, and get money for it. Let's stop real quick. Give you a view of the sand and stop just to make sure we don't have anybody else waiting to try to get in. Oh, yes, there is. And there's the beautiful, it is, it is um, very warm and it's supposed to be in the low 70s the next two days. So it is kind of strange, usually by this point of October, like right around the 15th or 16th, it seems to change overnight. What in one? They're putting on one of those love locks. On. <laughs> I'm going to give our stern look. <laughs> it doesn't really scare them but look at all the chilla leaves on the trees are changing it's really and it's so lovely to be able just to walk around without your jacket enjoy these lovely days we changed the clocks in two weeks from today so a week earlier than the u.s so it's going to be dark at the dreaded 4 30 4 45 a little bit later here it's that's it's always off a little bit. Chatelet, that column right there um, was moved. They put it in place and then they decided they needed to move it about 20 feet. And they literally picked it up and put it on rollers, and rolled it down the street a ways. So there's a lot of people. I'm gonna go to the other side just because the bouquinis are fun to see, but there's, Oh, sorry, ladies. Um, it's just a lot of people to navigate through. It has gotten a little quieter since it was 
the last few weeks with visitors, tourists in Paris, but it won't really calm down until mid-November. And it's kind of quiet for a month and then right before Christmas, it gets crazy here again. But then the day after New Year's, it gets quiet again. Just along. The Bucanese on this side sell mostly trinkets when they're supposed to sell like 75% books. But there is this guy that's over here straight ahead. He has some really lovely books about French history, Paris history. And I've spent many uh, minutes chatting away with him. Oh. Look at how pretty, oh, look at how beautiful. I can't wait to have an apartment so I could have a window box of red geraniums because that's what my grandma loved. Oh, how about a red Luxembourg chair? My grandma loved red geraniums and I didn't understand exactly the reason until the first time I came to Paris and saw them everywhere. And then I realized that's why she loved them so much. My windows, I don't have a way to be able to put those outside, but maybe I'll put some inside the window. So this was also where we are in the K. This is also the night that they decided to try to flee, 1791. This is where she was supposed to pick up the carriage that Alex von Fersen, her lover, had arranged. She got lost leaving the Palais de Tuileries and she was almost too late to catch it, but she, this is the route. It was parked down here. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not exactly why they made her go down this street. <coughs> when Louis the 16th was taken to the, um, Place de la Concorde, the Place de la Revolution at the time. It was, uh, he was put into a lovely carriage. And the color of that carriage, <coughs> pardon, was a ver. It was green and it's called ver wagon. And so when you see all these bucanis and the benches and the Wallace fountains and the Morris columns, all of these things in that green, it's all the same color green and it's called ver wagon. And it's because it was the green of the carriage. And Louis the 16th was taken to his death. Kind of a morbid thing, I think, to maybe recall <laughs> and maybe pick that as the color. They have words that doors. Um, but that's what it is. And they also do it so that when these things are in parks, they will kind of just blend in. So we're gonna head up here. I'll take a right on the Rue de la Monie, which goes right next to Samaritan. When she was sitting, she was basically, it was just a, basically a flat spread. And she just sat on a box with her hands tied behind her back. She had a little bonnet on. And uh, she almost fell off one point because they, went over something and it jostled. He almost fell off of it. Um, but he, thousands and thousands of people just stood on the sides of the streets waiting to see her cheering and pretty. The whole, that whole period when there was also these women that were the knitters and they would sit in front of the scaffolding and spend their day knitting, waiting for the decapitation to happen each day. And uh, kind of creepy. But the, the fact that then they would pick up these heads and put them on spikes and basically pass the spike around the crowd to cheer and scream that these people were beheaded, just this kind of gross. <laughs> so straight ahead, you might be able to see 
And most people might not realize how close this is. When you go to Santi's Bash, it really is very close to the edge of the Seine. You're not that far at all. And it is straight ahead. You can see it right there. So mad. There's a beautiful store inside. Opened about a little over a year ago. And so at we I did a whole podcast episode about the uh, couple called Sonia and his wife, Nelly J. We did a whole episode about them and how the store started and how at one point it went all the way to the edge of the street and this whole building as well. So at one point you could get everything and he started it on the banks um, up, I'm sorry, started up uh, on Pont Neuf where you have those little inlets and he said it started by selling red woven scarves, hats, and gloves. So you know I love a guy that's hey Ernest. So we're gonna go down here and then we're gonna go to Rue Saint Honore and take a left and we follow that quite a long ways. I'm gonna show you lots of great things along the way. It is so steep. It's the Rue de Rivoli, so it is closed mostly to cars other than taxis and buses and delivery vehicles. I think it must be It was supposed to maybe rain. I have my umbrella at the ready in case I get a few little raindrops. Ikea, I need to come to Ikea. I need to get a big one so that we're gonna go right past as well. I need to get some things. Check to see if we have anybody waiting. Oh yes. Really wish there was an easier way, the, the old way to do this app. I tested it out, but I tested it out. <laughs> Just me turning it on and everything was fine. It's when we have everybody else, there's little pictures on there that it does weird things. So I will figure that out. I would love to be able to do this on YouTube, but I need to have a lot more followers. So if you guys could do me a huge favor, and follow my YouTube channel, Claudine Blue Blanc Rouge. That would be a huge help. And then I could bring these each week on YouTube and then it records directly to YouTube. The reason I do it on Zoom is because this is how it records it and saves it. So here we are, Rue Saint Honore. We have Santu Stash right there. So Leal is kind of right behind us. And she took her left right here and headed down the street. I gotta get rid of the scarf. Hang on here. <laughs> it's lightweight, but it's wool. <laughs> All right. Good to go. Well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> we'll see how long this takes us to get down there if we get down there in an hour if not we'll keep going till we get to the Place de la Concorde as promised there's some stuff along the way I'd rather pop over a couple streets but we'll do that another time but this time we're on a specific Mission. This street up here, the Rue de la Bressac. We have this really cool fountain right here. 
for Louis the Sixteenth. So that's a that's in Latin. So Louis the Sixteenth. I don't think that would have been here when she was here. So here, this building right here, it's about 92, 92, 94, Rue Saint-Honoré. That, this is the actual address that Moliere lived, was born. There is, um, if you went back down there, it went straight from the street we came in on, the Rue de la Monique, uh, there is a building there on the side and it has a guy put a bust on there and a plaque saying Moliere was born there. But he just did it because he just thought it'd be cool to say he was born there, even though he actually was not. <laughs> so this is the actual address. Sarah Bernhardt's another one. Sarah Bernhardt has three addresses in Paris where she was born, where she was, was actually born there on the Rue des Ecoles in the Latin Quarter. This right here, number 115, is a pharmacy. It's always been a pharmacy, different business, but it's always been a pharmacy going back to that uh, 18th century. And this is what Axel von Fersen came to buy his invisible ink. And he wrote his letters, love letters to Marie Antoinette. Oh, more people. Thank you all for all so many of you joining me today. I appreciate it. Make sure you follow my Instagram. I am posting a ton in my store. Oh, pardon. Um, getting run over. Um, I post a ton in my stories each day of things I'm doing and seeing. I haven't even been able to get to everything. I'm going to get over to the sidewalk. <laughs> so make sure to follow me there. Look at those. Oh, so lovely. It's the Rue de Louvre here. We're going to pass over. We have down there the Bourse de Commerce, which is one of the newer museums in the city. That's so uh, contemporary, contemporary art. The building itself is amazing. If you're not a huge contemporary art person, kind of like myself, do go in there to see it for the building. The building is pretty phenomenal. Oh, and I can see the top of Saint Sulpice. So I'm pretty much in line in my house. <laughs> we'll get to cross here in a minute. Have to make sure there's not anybody else waiting. Yeah, we're good now. This is going to probably take more than an hour. <laughs> so. Settle in. I'll stop along the way for a glass of wine. <laughs> Just kidding. It seems to be like, I need to have, oh, let me call ahead to New more and I'll have them stand outside with a, uh, a glass of champagne and I could pick it up like, a, like I'm a, you know, in a marathon. We are very close to my favorite store. We don't close today, or I take you in. I'll have to do a little video from there. With this is the uh, Protestant church, and we are now across from the Louvre. This is the very end of the Sully Wing over there. This is the Protestant church that was before it was a Protestant church. It is where the kings would come. People from the court would come here and also saint germain -la -Soir. Now it is rarely opened. I went in one time on a Sunday morning, raced over there to see the inside of it. Um, so I'd always want to see the inside. It's rather plain inside and there was a ton of scaffolding. So when I finally got in there, but it's really cool from the back. If you're on the Rue de Rivoli side, and here's a street coming up here on the right where Louis Vuitton is. It is the original store. It is his original store and his original atelier. That is a store just right down this street, just down there a bit. Um, that is where he first painted those shoes red. And the story goes, if you don't know, that he was designing shoes and he had a mock-up of a shoe. 
and an employee had a thing of red nail polish on her desk and he picked it up and I decided to paint the bottom of her the shoe red and that is history but it actually goes back much farther because there's the kings there's a famous painting um, in the Louvre of Louis the 14th with his red sold and healed shoe. So nothing's new. There's no new ideas out there, guys. Even though people like to think there are really no new ideas, everything, it's just your take on that idea. This is a Ministry of Culture here, which is kind of a much more modern looking building. But they have this building and then they have part of the Palais Royale, which we're coming up to. This is, uh, this used to be the Grand Magasin de Louvre. So it was a, basically a big shopping mall. Um, it was empty, my friend Camille, her father had his gallery there. She grew up in there and across the street. And they were doing the whole thing. There was one holdout woman that I think she's even still in there. She's gonna keep her store. She was the only one still left. Most everybody left up over the last 10 years or so. But they're redoing it now. And I think they're, seems like maybe they're getting close to, at least they're a big, huge structure out here that they have set up that's coming down, starting to come down. There was a 10 kilometer run today in the center of Paris. And I got, I got right into the midst of it this morning. Forgot all about it until I was right on top of it. So in two weeks when we do this, it's gonna be dark. So we'll see what we're gonna do. I thought maybe because it's the day before Halloween to go to the cemetery, but if you recall last year when I did that, it was not on the day that the clocks changed, but I uh, got locked in Pere Lachaise after I joked about It'd be horrible to get locked in and I did. So here is the edge of the Palais Royale. So Marie Antoinette says coming down here, that right about here, and where this the fantastic bookstore is that is over here. And if you are a member of the Louvre, go in there because you get a discount with your Louvre card. This last thing I need is a discount in the bookstore. But Jacques-Louis David had come over here. He was living in the Louvre at the time when they all had their ateliers there, um, and apartments. And he walked over here and he sat up and looked out this balcony, one of the balconies that looks down on Rousseau on the right, and he sketched her the last image of her and he sketched her she was riding on the back of the carriage there has been some dispute over time that maybe that wasn't actually him that did that but it was right here and of course we are at one of my favorites and it is busy as usual many more very busy. If one of the guys was outside, I'd, we'd stop and say hi, but they're all busy. And we have the dancers. So always something happening in Paris. That's what I love about it. Sometimes it's inconvenient, <laughs> but it's always uh, fun. And it's always something to see. So we're gonna head, keep heading down here. We're gonna go all the way to Madeline. They do this sometimes during the week too depends on what's happening in the, inside the Comedy Francaise. We're just here, this is not Target. I hear people all the time say, 
hey, there's a target in Paris. It's not target. It's the the image, the little icon does look a lot like the target one. There's no target in Paris, but there's Monoprix. And Monoprix is even better. Monoprix is what I call the French target, but better. It's so great. You can find, well, you can find clothes and stuff in Target too. We'll wait. So here, looking straight up the street, we have the opera, the Palais Garnier, the beautiful opera house. That now does not have opera, it only has ballet, but it's still gorgeous. Let's see if we have, oh, more people. Thanks for the you, you new, new pals that were just getting in. I don't get a notification that there's people. So thank you so much for waiting. I had turned it so you didn't have to, I didn't have to let you in. You could just all get right in, but you know. So here, right here is also, there's a plaque right up there with another amazing heroine, Jeanne d'Arc. So this is where she was injured and captured. I'm gonna keep on, keep on going on here. There has been a, uh, after all of those, uh, I'm gonna walk out here because this is a little crowded. Um, after when COVID started, and a bunch of the, it started up in the 13th, even before COVID, all of the great big teddy bears showed up. And now they're everywhere and they're still everywhere, which they're kind of grossed me out. At this point, they've been outside for three years. I wouldn't want to be near who knows what, because <laughs> they don't wash them. But the other thing that is now come everywhere is this is these flowers, these fake flowers. They're on every other restaurant in the city. And it's too much. <laughs> I mean, those aren't, I mean, those don't even look, I mean, we're not even pretending they're real. Ooh, tacaria. It's the only thing. <laughs> the only thing I miss, Mexican pal. To the West Wing. So we're on Rue Saint Honoré, and we are going to go down the street. And at some point, we start getting into advertising too. Oh, look that. Well, that's kind of cool. It goes inside and outside. There's a couple of very cool bars on this street, too, that you basically have to have permission to go into. And then they'll decide how you look. They'll let you in. That's Van Gogh. Didn't he look just like Van Gogh? Did you guys see him? <laughs> he looked like Van Gogh. I'm just gonna keep breaking all the rules. When we get up here on the left, we're gonna see our girl Jean d'Arc again. I'll show you down the street. The when Marie Antoinette, when her husband was killed, January 21st of the same year, she was still was at the Temple Prison. There's Joan down there. She was still the temple prison, but on August 1st, they took her from the temple prison from her son and her daughter and her sister-in-law and took her to the conciergerie. So she was there for those last days of her life. Uh, at one point, they, uh, there was a carnation affair where they thought uh, somebody was going to bust her out and he would bring her a carnation. But she didn't actually, she wasn't completely aware of everything that was going on. Um, but she was kind of blamed for everything all the time. 
there's, of course, the affair of the necklace, which she actually didn't know anything about, but that was kind of her final nail in her coffin, you would say, because they all just thought it was her excess wanting this huge necklace. And she actually said when, so this, this is the affair of the necklace, different than when you watch Lupin, which is an amazing series, um, <coughs> excuse me, they talk about the queen's necklace. That is not the same necklace as the necklace from the thing that did her in. Um, that one, oh my gosh, it's amazing. There's, it was completely torn up and sold off pieces of it, but um, I would wear that baby in a second. But Louis XV was having it made for Madame Dubarry and it took the jeweler well over a year to find all the stones. And when he finally got all the stones, Louis XV had died. So he still had put it together. And uh, so then he thought, well, maybe Louis XVI will want to buy it for his wife, the new queen. And uh, so he showed it to him and Louis asked Marie, and she said, no, we could buy three ships for that price because this thing was, I mean, massive. And uh, so she says, no, we could buy these ships. So this wonderful woman found out that about this necklace and she realized, oh, one of my favorite little restaurants is down that street, the Ruby. This is also another, the Coupe d'Or. This is also another great restaurant. Um, she found out about this and thought, I have a way to get back because her father was the descendant of one of the illegitimate children of Louis XIV. And he thought, she thought she could right all the wrongs of her family by getting back at them and basically hoodwinking them into this necklace. So she ended up finding, she was ha having this affair, sleeping with this priest. And he had said these horrible things about Marie Antoinette's mother. When Marie Antoinette heard that, she had him basically ousted from Versailles. So he wanted a way to get back into her good graces. So look at that door. Um, and she found out about this. So. She said, hey, Marie Antoinette really wants this necklace. Oh, like these are bobble. These are tiny bobbles compared to what that was. But I would happily wear that. Um, she said, she would really be grateful to you if you served as the inter intermediary of this and get the necklace for her and then bring it to her, but she, nobody can know she bought it. So he said, oh, great, okay, I'll go do that. So she even, De La Motte, her name is De La Motte, she even had a prostitute that she found to dress up like Marie Antoinette and hid in the bushes at Versailles to meet him. And she gave him a, a rose and said, you know, oh, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would do this for me. I'll be forever grateful. So he's like, oh, well, of course I'm gonna do it then. So he uh, ends up getting this, signs a note. There's a note that says that, you know, Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI will pay for this. And uh, he takes the necklace, brings it to De La Motte, and she quickly gives it to her other lover who, handed it off, they quickly tore it apart, broke all the diamonds out of it, sent them off, sold them, did whatever they did. Nobody's ever known or been able to find any of that. So then the jeweler, here we go, plus one down. Then the jeweler is realizing like, hey, where's my money? And this is a lot of money back then. I mean, it, it was something like, well over 175 diamonds in this thing and some of them were huge and she said he's like somebody needs to pay me for this thing 
So he ends up going to Versailles, getting to the king and saying, hey, I need this money. And the king goes to Marie Antoinette. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I told you I didn't want it. And uh, then it gets out to the press and to the people that this is what happened. And basically it sealed the deal for Marie Antoinette. The Cardinal was in Versailles. They arrested him. He ended up, they ended up letting him go later. Um, De La Motte was found and arrested. She went into the prison. She ended up getting out of the prison and went, ran off to England. And poor Marie Antoinette was blamed for all of it. And basically they said it's because she was greedy and she wanted all these things. But in the truth of it, Marie Antoinette, the brother of Louis XIV, he spent three times the amount of money on clothes and shoes and wigs that Marie Antoinette did. She wasn't perfect. She did like her nice things. I mean, what lady doesn't? But she was, a, she was more of a scapegoat and a real easy way for them to dump things and blame her for things. Even if she was the one that was trying to tell Louis not to do these things and to save this money. But poor Marie Antoinette. There were some people that thought maybe they would not take off her head, but everybody else voted that she should die. Some Versace. We're getting into the we're getting into the fancy stuff now. Giorgio Armani. Should go to the other side so we can see Louis. The Burberry up here. We will not be looking down that side of the street up there. If you are new here, I have a very deep dislike. <laughs> hey, do you want to get a dress that looks like a couch? Kind of cute. I have a very deep dislike for a woman that for some reason people have respect for when they shall should not. I will not be showing her over there. So this here where the Dior store is, this during the siege of Paris, this was a site of a restaurant that had a very special meal on Christmas evening. Because this is where they served dinner one night and the menu consisted of, look at him rocking that blazer, love it. Uh, this is the menu consisted of things from the zoo. So there was elephant and camel and all sorts of things here. We're gonna go down just a little further. I'm not showing you that street. <laughs> I can't say her name. So I know some of you are watching and you can put it in the comments to let everybody else know. Her initials have two C's. And I did a podcast episode about her Two years ago, we did one about what a vile human being she is. If you want to know more, go check that out. And he said this part, now we're getting into the kind of the quieter side of Saint Honoré because some of these places are closed today. How about that red dress? I mean, I do love my red lipstick. <laughs> a moment, a moment, we're gonna slow down a little here. 
Oh, look at that red coat. There's a few red coats this year in Paris. I'm seeing them on people. <laughs> you know what this store is. <laughs> look at those new boots. That's the new collection. Um, I'm waiting for them to call me about something. We're almost to, so it's Valentino, so the Valentino store. So last, the collection they had in winter, that was for the fall. The, if you saw that, the show that they did, was everything was at peak, that amazing, gorgeous, shocking peak with gold hair. Um, and so now it's kind of everything you see in the stores right now. And this whole entire store, because it was fashion week a couple weeks ago, this whole entire store was encased in that same pink. It was really, really cool. I took some pictures of it. I need to post it. Um, but I love, love, love this pink. Look at that. <gasps> I just need that. I can use that. And we're getting close. We'll look to the right and we'll see. Well, you would see the Madeleine, but it is completely covered with this, with a uh, advertisement right now. Let me make sure this. It's covered with a huge advertisement because they're doing work on it, which I feel like they've been doing work on it for six years. Peach boys. There's some Canada goose if it gets really cold. There we have the Madonna. And this is the Rue Royale. This is also the street, which somebody lived on this street. That is a hint of that sign up there. Mr. Dior, Christian Dior, look at this side. The Madeline really is a gorgeous church. Very different from all the other churches, but right now she's all covered up. We're doing pretty good on time. You can, um, you can, if you want to, you could be, and I'd always appreciate, you can leave a little uh, tip. You could do it to my Venmo or PayPal at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com or on my Instagram, if you hit my bio, there's a little thing that says, buy me a champagne. And you can even leave a dollar or two, whatever you want on there. I'm also going to, I have my Patreon and if you want to join that, I'm going to start doing um, some Instagram stories only for the Patreon. So I will go and get them set up and I'll send Patreons a message um, and start having some special content just for you. So it'll be in my Instagram stories and I will just put you in there as a close friend. And then you get to see all of uh, your husband's special Instagram stories and some videos I'm going to make just for you. So if you want to join that, um, it's a great way to support all of the stuff I bring to you every day consistently. So we're heading over here to the Place de la Concorde. There's Maxine's over here. It is a muggy afternoon here. Uh, 
I just was watching uh, Midnight in Paris with some friends recently again. And, uh, you know, they go in here where she wishes they could go back to Boutelli Pop. And I get asked that all the time when I've been guests on other people's podcasts asking me which time I would want to go to. And I think it changes depending on what I'm researching or writing about at that time. I think it'd be really cool to go back to the Court of Versailles with Louis the Fourteenth until, you know, you had to use the restroom <laughs> or, you know, you wanted to shower. Then I think I would be like, yeah, time to go. So out here in the Place de la Concorde, the Place de la Revolution, is what it was, um, there is a plaque, and we'll go out there. There's a plaque out there next to, below the obelisk, that kind of marks that, that the death of Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette. But that's not where the guillotine was. That's not where she actually lost her head. And I'm going to take you out to where it is. This right here, when I get out there, I can show you. This is the beautiful Prion Hotel. Here, the Prion. And over there you have the Hotel de la Marine, which is a stunning place. I am a little worried to go too close down here with the camera because this over here in the corner is the American Embassy. And they are very, mean have very large guns and they i took a picture from about where that crosswalk is and they ran after me with the gun <laughs> and uh made me delete it and i said just we american but he they did not care i'm gonna try to get over here so i don't want to go too close i didn't want to picture that building anyway I don't know why, literally the only building in Paris you cannot take a picture of. You can practically walk up to the door and knock on it and go inside and have tea with President Macron. Oh, can we join me? But don't take a picture of the American embassy. Look at a beautiful evening it is. This morning, the sun after the sunrise, it was gorgeous. I took a bunch of pictures and videos to so make sure to look at those. I haven't posted all of them, but I will get them all done. The Place de la Concorde really is gorgeous, and it is kind of one of the best places, especially up there by the Jeux de Plum, to get a great view of the sunset. We could get a little. So the statues that go around here, around the Place de la Concorde, are named after kind of the major cities of France at the time that they were installed in the 19th century. This one here is for Rouen. And right about here is where the guillotine was located. So just kind of right here at the edge, this is where the guillotine was. So pretty much where I'm standing, where 12 marks the spot. This is actually the obelisk for the year 2000. They were trying to make this into a sundial. There's over 125 sundials in the city of Paris. Um, this was one that was supposed to try to be made as a sundial too. Um, it worked for a little bit, but then nobody really seemed to care. And you can still come across some of these and they're really cool. I always love the first time I came across it, I was like, what in the heck is that? And then got really excited and researched it. Look at that. It's a Prion. So we're probably not that far. Uh, we're getting close to sunset. Um, probably about 45 minutes. So here's the Rouen. And there's one for Strasbourg and the one for Lille were done by James Cartier. And his lover at the time was Juliette Drouet. She would end up being the lover of Victor Hugo for over 50 years. And the one of uh, Strasbourg is done after Juliet. But this is where they were. So she came down here, took about an hour, half hour and 45 minutes to get her to do the walk that we did in 
just about 55 minutes or so, um, brought her here. And I mean, there was a lot of people when we were walking and then got her off of the cart where everybody was screaming and hollering and happy to see her meet her demise. And uh, she walked up the scaffolding. Her last words were, she just faces, she stepped on the executioner's foot and said, I don't miss you. And that was it. So after she was killed and beheaded um, and they picked up her head, her body and her head were taken to the cemetery, um, the cemetery of the Madeleine, which is where the Chapelle Expertoire is now. Um, I've done some videos about that in the past. And we did, um, when we started the podcast in 2020, I did a series of four episodes all about the life of Marie Antoinette. And when I was looking up something on Google um, about her and uh, it comes up the the my website and the podcast episodes comes up as like the number four thing for Marie Antoinette which I was like hey that's kind of cool um but we did four episodes and it's really interesting going from basically her life as a child all the way up until her death and then that of her daughter um Madame Royale she was the only of the children only one of the children to survive the entire thing the revolution she was beloved for a period of time when everybody figured out maybe maybe Marie Antoinette wasn't as horrible as they thought. I'm going to walk you over here. We'll go over here to the uh, plaque, show you the plaque, give you a good view down the Champs-Élysées. The Champs-Élysées, somebody, uh, some clients were saying they were going to go down there. And I told them, eh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. It's not not the Champs Elysees you think of from the wonderful Joe de Saint song. Um, but they're trying to clean it up. They're trying to get rid of a lot of the stores. In fact, just this week they announced that the Disney store is closing. So if you're a Disney fan, I'm sorry, but they're trying to get rid of all those stores. They're trying to bring back some of the smaller stores, uh, the more boutique stores, the French stores. Um, now it really is kind of an outdoor American mall in many ways. I think I could have taken that guy. <laughs> I think I could have walked past even him. I'll look a lot here. Hopefully it's not, I don't think it's covered right now. Last year it was covered. Yeah, the two fountains here, the one closest to the Seine represents the sea and this represents the rivers. I always remember it because the Seine goes out to the sea, even though it is a river. <laughs> And then the obelisk, they had this completely, they basically put it in scaffolding, but they covered the scaffolding. So it looked like it was in this gigantic box um, and they were cleaning it. And it is the fastest thing I've ever seen actually accomplished here in France when it comes to renovating or rejuvenating something. It was shocking that it was done in a few months. I couldn't believe it, uh, but it looks really great. And I have pictures my grandpa took um of it when they came to visit and with my grandma standing outside of it um and i brought all of those with me i carried every one of their a giant box of i put in my carry-on because they were too precious but look at that look at the sky and then you have the champs Elysees. i start singing but then youtube won't like that well you guys might not like that either but look at that so the Hotel de la Marine, the greatest thing about it, and you could probably see people out there, you could go out there and stand out there. And so I cannot wait for in a couple of weeks when the sun sets and it's still open, I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna watch the sunset from up there. Maybe I'll try to do it on a Sunday and uh, I could take you guys with me and share. Um, oh look, well, here's a little, so here's the plaque. It looks like somebody put something over it. It's a little, this little ads are all over. Um, with Catherine Deneuve. So here it is. It says 16th of October, 
for Marie Antoinette. And she says, heavens, people have lost their head. So this was here to mark, just mark the horrific occasion. It was, it was the Place Louis the 15th and there was a big statue of him on the horse here. I'm not sure why we need to be so loud. And you can walk all the way around it. It looks really great. It's just so clean. And the gold really shines now. Look at that. And then, took, uh, too bad the fountains aren't on. <laughs> One time <clears throat> I was down here looking at the fountains and it was a day that it was a little windy, but it was this beautiful sunny day and it was a little windy. And I was walking around just in the little bliss of taking photos and videos and oh, it's so lovely, it's gorgeous. Look at that view. And uh, I got to screenshot that myself. And uh, oops. <laughs> And I accidentally turned my screen off. Sorry about that. Um, but I was walking over here. And then as soon as I got on the other side of the wind, the spray of water came blowing onto me. And the security guys that were walking around here were just in hysterics. I just laughed, shook my head. But so this is the sea, reminiscent of the sea. He looks like he needs a little, uh, Clean up. These are supposed to be. Uh, oh, and now, um, next is they're going to do the Fonton Saint Sulpice. So, there we are. So, it's a little bit after. It's just a little bit afterwards. We did pretty good. I'll see you. Oh, there's lots of chats. I'm missing everything. I'll see if I missing any. Can you buy tickets to Hotel Marina? Or yes. Um, usually, yes, you can. Um, check on their website. Sometimes they, um, some of the museums only put their tickets out for a certain points. So sometimes it's only um, one month out. So if you're looking for something and you're coming, it's not something that usually is um, sells out. Um, I mean, it's not it's not the Lou, um, but it is uh, you know it it is popular, um, but it's not you know I've walked up before and not had any problem with it. So oh, I see what is Helen Cookie? I'm scrolling up through all these things. Oh, I see you matching Monoprix. <laughs> Um, just making sure there wasn't anything that we were missing. Any questions you guys had? Here, I'll come back on and say hi. Hi. I don't know how far we walked. I don't, I could look afterwards and see. But here is a, it's a lovely evening here in Paris. So it's, uh, you've got the Tuileries right there. There is a, they're putting in the um, Art Basel, they're doing a big, um, that comes starts this week, starts on the 18th. And so there's going to be a whole bunch of outdoor um, statuaries and monuments and all sorts of art that's gonna be in the Tuileries. They started setting it up the other day. I was making a video that I don't think I posted yet showing some of them, but I will go check that out this week. Maybe we could even do the video depending on, um, the time of the day and what's going on out there next Sunday from there because there was some really cool stuff there was this really cool statue where it looked like a old old renaissance statue kind of coming out of the ground and stuff so I was trying to find some information and it is uh there's not doesn't they don't have it listed who the artists are yet um so I wanted to wait to see that to share it with you so I could tell you who all of them are but um it starts on the 18th so I think that's Tuesday the 18th also here at the Orsay is an exhibit starting about uh, Rosa Bonheur and we did an episode about her on the podcast um, I think in 2020 as well maybe it's 2021 she was an amazing amazing artist she was a obviously a woman she was um, incredibly gifted at 
painting animals, her animal paintings, it almost looks like photographs are so amazing. She was one of those, just like George Sand, where she decided she was going to wear pants all the time uh, because she was in, you know, mucking around in, in the stables and on farms and everything, and she was getting dirty. Um, and so she decided she was going to wear pants too. And back then you had to have a permit to wear a pant, to wear your pants. George Sand said, screw it. I'm not going to ask for that. But uh, Rosa Bonar did and said that it was for health reasons because she was out in uh, the mud all that all the time. But she was an amazing artist. Uh, Eugenie, the wife of Napoleon III, wanted to give her the Legion of Honor, but he said no, he didn't want anything to do with it because she was a woman, they didn't do that. And then finally he relented and said, yes, you could do it, but it can't be a big exhibit, it can't be a big affair. So Eugenie had to go to her chateau that is outside um, near Fontainebleau, and she gave her the Legion of Honor award there. Um, but she's a fascinating woman. She's really, really interesting. Did amazing art um, that became extremely popular. She was even went off to England and the queen at the time um, wanted some of it. She even bought one of the paintings from her. Um, and so she was well ahead of her time. And so we always love those ladies that are out there busting things up and doing things their own way. So I'm excited to go see that exhibit that opens this week. Um, there's lots of good ones that Orsay, I just saw a week or so ago, is going to have one in March. So if you're coming in March, they're doing one that's Monet and Degas together. And I cannot wait because I love both of them. I really, really love Manet. Um, so if you're coming in March, it's right at the beginning of the month. It's like, I want to say it's the sixth, seventh, eighth, something like that. So if you're coming in the spring, um, make sure to have that on your list. And I will, um, try to do a better job of keeping up on all those things and listing them on my website. I just haven't had much time since I got here. Um, I guess it's seven weeks ago now. Eight, I don't even know. Um, but I have been busy with clients almost every single day doing tours. So I have not had time to do anything. If you were wondering where my newsletter is, that is why I might have to change it to do it monthly because just keeping up and writing a novel every week to send in my newsletter is just, um, something has to give at this point because it's just too busy and there's all these great things I need to see. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you next week. Um, I will figure out what we're going to do. There's a couple of things. A um, couple of things I was thinking maybe we could go to a cemetery because it's close to Halloween. Um, but I don't want to do them on the 30th because it's going to be dark and I don't want to get stuck in there. Um, and uh, or maybe we'll go to Tuileries or maybe we go, maybe I'll save the Hotel de la Marine at the sunset. Right there. For a little later. But thank you guys so much. If you want to join my Patreon, it's uh, Blue Blanc Rouge. My YouTube is Claudine Blue Blanc Rouge um, and also my Instagram. So make sure to follow me on all of those things. So I have uh, more of a chance to be able to bring you guys even more things every single week. And thank you guys so much. And hopefully you could watch this again on YouTube. We'll cross our fingers that it records. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. And I will see you next week or later on. It's on Instagram.